Hello everyone, welcome back to our emergency medicine channel. Today I am here with an important sequence to look for in a MRI while evaluating an acute stroke. So let's start. So starting with the diffusion weighted imaging, also called the stroke sequence. This sequence helps in early identification of ischemic stroke, may be seen within minutes following the onset of ischemia. The lesion will be hyper intense, which will be maximum at day 7 and shall be positive for 3 weeks after the onset. This sequence helps in differentiating between an acute and a chronic stroke. It correlates well with the infarct score. Diffusion gradient it sensitizes the MR image to the motion of water molecules. Thus, loss of motion results in restricted diffusion and appears brighter on diffusion weighted images. And then after diffusion weighted imaging, Correlation with ADC, that is apparent diffusion coefficient. In this sequence, the lesion will show low signal intensity with maximum at 24 hours and then there will be increase in the signal intensity after 7 to 10 days and finally becomes bright in the chronic stage. So here you can compare the image of diffusion weighted images and ADC. On the diffusion weighted images, an acute stroke will be seen as hyper intense. On ADC, it will be hypo intense. So, this is the most important sequence in correlation that we have to do in an acute stroke. Next, talking about T2 images and flare, this fluid attenuated inversion recovery. In this sequence, infarcted tissue is seen as hyperintense lesion. After 6 to 12 hours, sulcal effacement and mass effect can be visualized. Usually, patient with a negative flare image is usually considered in 90% cases as being image within the first 3 hours of symptom onset. Thus, a mismatch between a positive diffusion weighted image and a negative flare image helps in identification of patients who are likely to benefit from thrombolysis. In an hyperacute stroke, T2 image is useful to visualize the loss of normal signal void in large occluded arteries within minutes of stroke onset. Next, talking about gradient recoiled echo. In this sequence, it helps in differentiating between an ischemic stroke and an hemorrhagic stroke. Usually, CT is a standard method for diagnosis of intracranial hemorrhage. Hyperacute intracranial hemorrhage can be identified on MR on gradient recoiled images with an excellent accuracy. Next coming saturated images. It is a high resolution 3D gradient recalled echo sequences. It is highly sensitive in detection of hemorrhage. Fresh cloths contain high concentration of deoxyhemoglobin that appears hypo intense. This sequence also helps to depict distal branch thrombi that may not be visualized on an MRA. Next coming to MRA. Commonly used non-contrast MRA techniques is TOF images. It is used to assess for luminal diameter and occlusion. On the sequences, stationary tissue shows low signal intensity and conversely normal tissue shows increased signal intensity. Coming to an contrast enhanced MRA where gadolinium is used to generate contrast between the intravascular lumen and the surrounding tissue. So this is how an occluded vessel is seen on an MRA. Talking about T1 weighted images, the purpose of the sequence is just for the anatomical evaluation. Next, talking about perfusion MRI, perfusion weighted images, it reflects the overall area of hypoperfusion including the ischemic penumbra, whereas diffusion weighted images, it reflects the irreversible damage impact which is termed as a mismatch between these sequences, but it may not always clearly indicate the same. However, in current clinical practice, Tmax and mean transit time appears to give best results. So next, talking about the next sequence that is fat saturated T1 images. It is basically useful when cervical artery dissection is suspected. The intramural blood appears hyper intense on T1 fat saturated images, typically within 2 to 3 days after the dissection. So these are the important sequences to keep in mind while evaluating a patient with an acute stroke. So while working in the emergency department, one must be able to catch up an acute stroke on an MRI. The main limitation of an MRI is that it may not be always available, it is time consuming, it may not be immediately accessible, sometimes there may be patient factors for eligibility for MRI or in case of contraindications due to pacemaker or implants and MRI is difficult in case of an unstable patient. Despite having potential benefits, sometimes an MRI may fail to deal with the urgency of the treatment. So hope this was useful. Thank you.